Spix macaw. These affable animals are among a select group of talking birds that can mimic human speech. Lively, gregarious, and fiercely loyal to their mates, Spix's macaw once occupied the desert woodlands of Brazil. However, habitat loss, predation, and poaching drove it to extinction in the wild. They are now bred exclusively in captivity to maintain their numbers. Spix's Macaw Facts The 2011 animated movie Rio featured a storyline with a pair of Spix's Macaw called Blue and Jewel. The male character was likely based on a real bird named Presley, who lived in Colorado for years and later repatriated to Brazil. The species is named after German naturalist Johann Baptist von Spix, who collected the first specimens in 1819. However, fellow German naturalist Georg Mark Grave was the first European to describe the species in 1638. The species is also known by the more descriptive name Little Blue Macaw. Spix's Macaw Scientific Name Cyanopsita spixii is the scientific name for Spix's Macaw. The name of the genus Cyanopsida derives from the Greek words kuinos, which means blue, and satakos, which means parrot. As the name suggests, Spix's macaw is a type of true parrot, a long-tailed, vibrantly colored New World bird. The species is the only known member of its genus. It is closely related to the blue-headed macaw, the red-bellied macaw, the great green macaw, the scarlet macaw, and many others. Spix's macaw appearance and behavior. Spix's macaw can be identified by its striking blue plumage. The exact color of the body varies from the brilliant turquoise blue along its breast and abdomen to the duller bluish gray of the head. It also features gray skin, pale yellow eyes, and a black curved bill. From head to tail, an average member of the species measures around 22 inches. The elegant tail feathers are about as long as the rest of the body. This makes it slightly smaller than the typical macaw species. Males tend to be larger than females, but the sexes are otherwise similar in appearance. The raucous bird has an astonishing vocal range. In their natural habitat, macaws communicate with each other through screeches and squawking sounds. Some of their most common sounds include, kra arc, that it makes during flight and a wichaka, sound for mating. Like many parrots, it has the remarkable ability to mimic human speech, which has made it a popular pet in the illegal bird trade. Because there were so few individuals left in the wild by the time scientists began studying them, a lot of information about the bird's natural behavior still rests on speculation. For example, the birds tend to cluster in pairs or family units, but it is believed that they may have once traveled in flocks of up to 15 individuals in the wild. They can be quite aggressive when they feel threatened, but they are mostly docile and shy around humans or strangers. Along with crows and ravens, parrots are considered to be some of the most intelligent birds on the earth. In studies, parrots have demonstrated the ability to observe, learn, and remember things around them. Their large brain-to-body size and neurological anatomy seem to be key aspects to their complex cognition, linguistic capabilities, and social behavior. Due to its remarkable intelligence, Spix's macaw has a fascinating behavioral quirk. It follows a daily routine with a degree of precision that seems almost human. Flight paths, hunting strategies, and bathing all seem to be planned out according to a daily schedule. The birds are most active during the day, and they sleep at night. They may occasionally move from place to place in response to food availability and nesting sites, but they otherwise remain within a limited range of their home. Spix's macaw habitat Spix's macaw once occupied the interior northeastern parts of Brazil, including the states of Bahia and Piauí. They exist mostly within a semi-arid region known as the Caatinga, right around the São Francisco River. The Caatinga is an example of a gallery forest, which means most of the vegetation tends to congregate near the river, while the surrounding area contains only sparse vegetation. It is believed that in the wild Spix's macaw preferred the caraibera trees for nesting, roosting, and foraging. The birds live in hollows and cavities along the crown of the tree. Extending 26 feet into the air, these trees grow along at regular intervals along the banks of the river and its tributaries. They are surrounded by thorn bush vegetation. This habitat is wholly unique to this particular area of Brazil. There are few places like it on Earth. Spix's macaw diet. Spix's macaw feasts on a selection of nuts, seeds, and fruits, along with small bits of tree bark and cactus meat, from various trees and cacti around its habitat. 
The beak is specifically adapted to crack open tough nuts. When they still existed in the wild, the birds may have played an integral role in dispersing seeds around the environment. In captivity, the birds are fed with a wide variety of different foods, including palm nuts, seeds, fruits, and even some meats. They are supplemented with vitamins and minerals. Spix's macaw predators and threats Spix's macaw was susceptible to predation from rats, feral cats, mongooses, and monkeys in the wild. Some of these predators are relatively new threats that have been introduced into Brazil over the past few centuries. When threatened, the birds will make loud noises and flap their wings to scare off predators, or they may take to the air. Both the eggs and young birds are most vulnerable to predation before they have learned how to fly, and so they require the protection of the adults. The number of Spix's macaw has declined sharply from its peak. Some of the reasons for this include hunting, both by settlers and indigenous people, the destruction of the caribera trees, and the introduction of African bees, which compete for nestling sites in the trees. Habitat loss is perhaps the most important factor for their decline. Farms and ranches have transformed large swaths of territory in which the species resides. The construction of the Sobraginho Dam in the 1970s also submerged part of the bird's natural habitat. Due to their particular nesting and foraging requirements, Spix's macaw is vulnerable to this kind of upheaval. Climate change could likewise complicate any efforts to restore the bird to its natural habitat. In addition to habitat loss and predation, the lucrative bird trade further depleted numbers in the wild. When the trade was at its height in the 1980s, a single bird could easily fetch a price of at least $40,000 on the black market. It is currently illegal to trade in the bird except for conservation, educational, or scientific purposes, but wealthy collectors are still known to keep them. Spix's macaw population. Spix's macaw was once prolific across the Caatinga, but it seemed to enter a period of steep decline after European colonization. Years of deforestation and agricultural development pushed the species to the brink of extinction. The last known wild macaw disappeared in 2000. A wild bird was briefly sighted in 2016, raising hopes that more birds might remain in the wild, but it is believed that the individual may have been released recently from captivity. The red list of threatened species now lists the bird as officially extinct in the wild. The last wild macaw became something of an international celebrity in the 1990s. Unable to find another member of its own species to mate with, the bird paired up with a bright green alligator's macaw, which is a closely related species. The couple engaged in typical relationship behavior. They flew together during the day, and the male escorted the female back to her nest almost every night. In order to make him breed, scientists introduced him to a captive female Spix's macaw, but the experiment ended prematurely when the female died without producing any chicks. The male eventually produced a hybrid offspring with the alligator's macaw, but the embryo did not survive for long. Spix's macaw is currently being kept alive and bred in captivity, where the birds are fed by hand. These efforts are overseen by the Brazilian government. However, the species cannot return to the wild until the habitat is restored. That is why efforts are underway to create protected areas in the state of Bahia for eventual reintroduction into the wild. All of the remaining birds are descended from only a few individuals and therefore have low genetic variability.